Hi there, thank you for watching this video. We're thrilled you're here with us for this exhilarating journey. Our Kubernetes expert Nico had quite the adventure. He was on a quest to find the perfect video on installing the Apache web server in a Kubernetes cluster, but what he discovered left him utterly disappointed. We decide to produce something better. We will start with something simple and end with something sophisticated. In this video, we're about to unlock the secrets of deploying the Apache web server in your Kubernetes cluster using a Kubernetes manifest the easiest way you'll ever come across. And the best part? You'll be opening this web server in your browser in no time. But that's just the beginning. We'll dive into the captivating world of persistent volumes, PVs, and persistent volume claims, PVCs. And the grand finale? We'll show you how to craft your very own self-signed certificate the gateway to turning your web server into an HTTPS server. Whether you're a seasoned Kubernetes pro or just embarking on your journey, this video has something for everyone. So without further ado, let's jump into this electrifying adventure. Now without further ado, it's time to introduce our Kubernetes expert, Nico, please note. Niso speaks with a Dodecanese accent, but fear not, he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Hi there. I was looking at YouTube trying to find a suitable video to explain how to install Apache 2 web server in the Kubernetes cluster. I was very disappointed with what I found and decided to create this video. You will find a link to our blog below with the instructions and you will also find another link below and even below the blog here to get the source code. I'm going to start by first doing the minimal we need to get Apache to work on a Kubernetes cluster. So you need to do the following. You need to create what they call a Kubernetes manifest. Some people refer to it as a YAML file, but that's what the official name is, a Kubernetes manifest. So run this command, nano apache, Now, I've already been testing my content before I recorded it to make sure it works. So you'll find that the content is there. But what you would then do is you would then go and copy this to there. Copy. And then you would go here and you would say paste. I'm not going to do that because, as I said, I've already done that. So then after that, Control S, Control X to save it. After creating the manifest, the first thing we want to do, and I always recommend you work this way. When you deploy to the Kubernetes cluster, never deploy outside the namespace. So always create a namespace. We are going to create a namespace called HTTPD. So this is the command, copy it, paste it. Now in my case, it's already there, but in your case, that's what you would do. And then the next thing you need to do is after you've created a namespace, we then want to apply the manifest to the Kubernetes cluster. In other words, this is how we deploy our applications. Now we use the command kubectl apply dash F for file, the name of the file, and notice I have the namespace here. We created namespace HTTPD. Now we deploy it using that namespace. So copy, paste, and run. After doing that, we now can go into the Kubernetes cluster and see what's deployed inside that namespace. I'll explain this command. So kube control get all, this will give us all the services, pods, everything that's in the cluster and inside this namespace and the dash O wide, we want a detailed display on the screen. So when I run this, that's what you get. So we can now see that we have a pod. Our pod is ready and it's running. We can also see that we have a service. And this is important because I'll explain 
the manifest after I've done this, but it's telling me that I'm mapping port 80 to 30046. And then the next thing we can do is we can actually open it in a curl command. So from here, if I run this command, And there you can see this is the web page. So, so this thing is working. Let me clear the screen. And then the next thing we can do is open this in the browser. So let me do that in this browser here. Just make it wider. And there you are. We have Apache running in, in the Kubernetes cluster. Now let me explain what we did and how we achieved this. So let's go back to the manifest. When working with Kubernetes manifests, you can concatenate multiple manifests into a single file. To do that, we use the triple dash. So here is the triple dash. And if we look here, the kind, this is a service manifest. And if we look at the top here, here we have a deployment manifest. So here we are telling Kubernetes what we want to deploy. Here is the image. We are specifying one replica. So in a production environment, you may want a hundred or a thousand or, or ten or whatever number of replicas of this Docker container, because basically this is a Docker container which we are deploying into our Kubernetes cluster. Unlike Docker, when you use Docker, you are basically limited to running one container in Docker. And here I can run as many as I want. So if I make that three or five, it will give me more instances. So that's one of the powers of the manifest. In Docker, we have the Docker Compose file, and that is as close as you get to a manifest. But the difference between a Docker Compose file and a Kubernetes manifest, consider this to be like a Docker Compose file running on steroids. And as you can see, there's a lot of things that we can specify in here. Here's the container. If we look at the service, here we are specifying that we are going to use port 80. So what we are doing here is we are specifying the ports. So if we go back here and we run the previous command, If you look at the service, you can see there's an IP address which you can't reach. But what it's telling me here is internally port 80 is exposed externally to 30046. This is why we were able to open it in the browser port 30046. Now I could have ended this video here because with this we basically achieved our goal. However, I want to point out something. So let us go to the source code. This is another project that I've created in GitHub. What we have here is the original working project. This is what we have been looking at. But now, if you want to seriously use this as a web server, then you need to go to the next step. We need to add some kind of permanent storage. In Kubernetes, we talk about a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim. So we create a volume here in this manifest, the first part, we create a volume, we tell it the path where we want to store. And we also tell it that we want to reserve five gigabytes of storage. So that's what the persistent volume does. Now the persistent volume claim is where we say we want to use this persistent volume. We want to use this volume in the in this access mode. Read write once. So what this will do is it will allow us to read the data from the persistent volume before we start and then any changes it will write when we are when we are finished and we are going to shut down our web server when you have 
added your persistent volume and persistent volume claim, we need to make a change to the Kubernetes manifest to use it. So here is the Kubernetes manifest. And you can see here, we have a section called volumes. And there we are specifying the persistent volume claim. So in the manifest, in the deployment manifest, this is the deployment manifest. We are specifying the persistent volume claim so that we now are adding permanent storage to the Kubernetes cl cluster for this Docker image. In other words, for this container. So this container now has permanent storage. So when you shut it down and start it again, you're not losing data, which you would with the previous example where we didn't use persistent storage. So that is the mechanism to do that. And then I wanted to add one more thing feature to this project and that is I wanted to be able to work with a self-signed certificate so that not only could I open a HTTP page but I also wanted to be able to open an HTTPS uh, web page. So I've provided you with the instructions here how to do it. Notice that I've also included the persistent volume and persistent volume claim. There is now a change to this Kubernetes manifest because it's going to hold on the top here. You see, we have what we call a secret. And wh what we do is we take the certificate and the private key. So this is your self-signed certificate and this is your private key, but they are then base 64 encoded and then that's the value that you put in here and in here so once you've done that i do provide the instructions how to do that but once you've done that then this part the secret manifest is then complete then we have a similar deployment manifest to what we had just seen when we were starting to use PVs and PVCs, persistent volume claims. And then finally, we had the service. This is nothing unusual. We've already seen this. But now we've added to the service. You see here we had port 80. Now we have port 443, which is our HTTPS default port. And you can see in this manifest, the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume have all been appended into one Kubernetes manifest. So you could basically run this manifest and you would have everything. I just want to go back to the instructions. So here are the instructions to create a self-signed certificate. You need to first of all install OpenSSL. So this command you run to install OpenSSL. I'm assuming that because this is a Ubuntu server, you are going to run this inside this server. So this is the command you are going to run to create your self-signed certificate. So once, once we've created our certificate, we will have a PEM file and the key file. And then we go into the configuration on the server. This is a file where we put the paths to these, the key and the PEM. And after we've done that, so if you go to this folder here and then you edit this file, that's where you put this information into, like that. So, so here is the complete example of how you add the certificate. And then once you've done that, we then need to enable the configuration. So this is the command you run. Remember, we used the sample SSL here. That was the file, example SSL conf. So we now have to go and run this command. And you can replace this with the name of your configuration. So this is where, where we had created this file. And you can replace that here. And then that's it. Once you've done that, all you need, need to do now is to restart Apache. Because Apache runs as a service, you can just say sudo service Apache to restart. And with that, I hand you back to Josh. We appreciate your time and support on this enlightening journey. Today, we've covered one. 
Simple deployment, deploying the Apache web server in Kubernetes using a Kubernetes manifest. 2. Manifests. We learned what Kubernetes manifests are like. Docker compose files on steroids 3. Data permanence, understanding persistent volumes, PVs, and persistent volume claims, PVCs, for secure and permanent web content storage. 4. Security enhancement, creating a self-signed certificate for secure HTTPS connections. Whether you're a Kubernetes beginner or an expert, these takeaways will enhance your skills and improve your web server's performance and security. Thanks for joining us in this learning experience. If you found value in this video and wish to stay updated with our latest content, consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell. Subscribing ensures you never miss our informative videos and tutorials. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, we invite you to become a Patreon supporter. This exclusive opportunity grants access to upcoming training courses in PDF format, enriching your expertise while supporting the channel. It's an excellent way to stay at the forefront of technological advances and further your understanding. As a Patreon, you get access to our training courses in PDF format as they become available.